Hi guys. Today, Wednesday lesson of the day is on a Thursday because we have changed our consult days from Wednesday to Thursday. So now we already went from six days a week, 16 hour days, which I did for seven years to uh, five days a week and then now to four days a week. So we are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday operating. Thursday is the new hump day. And today we had a really, really, really nice day. It was like shocking. It makes you wanna be a doctor and work forever. And it's because most of our patients were from out of state and out of state people are super respectful to doctors. No, I'm joking about that halfway. I had actually uh, the loveliest patients from LA as well. So very, 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 very happy today and very lucky and if every day goes like this, I will operate for the rest of my life because everyone was so nice. Um, so the first question here by Gabriel Sala is, do you miss the Dimon Dimonicio? Dimonicio is a friend of ours uh, named Vinicius Neves and he is in Brazil. And the answer, Gabriel Sala is yes. So the lesson of the day today is about collagen. And I've talked about this before, but I think it's just become lost in the world of million videos that I've made over time. So I will just go over collagen again and the kind of uh, errant misinterpretations of what collagen is and that we are not made up all of collagen. So the uh, biggest thing I want to, or the main thing I want to explain here is that the, uh, the way that most doctors describe collagen deposition with lasers, with um, irritants like Sculptra, Radius, or with uh, polydiaxinone or, um, or polyelactic acid, which are different types of suture material that we use in either threads or in uh, volumizing materials, is terribly incorrect. The fact that, uh, that those things deposit collagen can't be argued. They definitely deposit collagen. 100% they deposit collagen but there is a big difference in types of collagen and the way in people interpret these things is really, 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 really completely imaginative and completely wrong. And they misinterpret research studies to justify what they say to patients because they have a way of explaining it to people that works well. Case in point here would be, or an example, let's say, not full case in point, but an example would be that there is a um, type of, therapy person, um, spiritual healer who discusses the uh, pineal gland and the um, axes and CSF and all this kind of stuff and uses science to explain his non-scientific explanation of science to get people to feel better. And it works. So I'm totally into this. Um, it works and it's a, it's, I did hypnotherapy back in medical school and it's a form of meditation actually, where you can get people to imagine things and there's no stronger way to get them to imagine, to get a psychosomatic effect than to explain to them that it's scientifically happening in their body. Um, so you would tell them you have this crystal inside your CSF and you're producing it and it does this and that and whatever. Now, realistically, if what this guy said were scientifically true, we would all have seizures and die. Um, but it is still extremely useful because he uses it to help manipulate people in a positive way where they can control their body somewhat to get positive changes and positive effects. So um, in the world of plastic surgery, I guess we do that too, where we talk about collagen deposition and it makes you feel like you're getting a positive effect. However, it is completely wrong the way people describe it. Collagen, there are several types and they're labeled by Roman numerals or numbers, one, two, three, four, Five. And there are different balance between one and three, one and two, two and four, and different types of tissue, and there's different types of organization. So I explained to the patients that not all collagen is good collagen and not collagen is the same as all other collagen. Meaning you could have collagen like a pile of sticks that's just sitting there and it's really nothing, or you can have collagen that is built into a house and it sticks that go up this way and that way. And it makes a house that you can actually physically live in. These two types of collagen are very different. And uh, this goes with hypertrophic scarring is collagen. It's type like one in three. 
uh, I think more three and it has like myofibroblasts and other vascular things in there. Whereas keloid is like a collagen tumor and it's also one in three, but um, more three uh, or more one, more one, but a mix. And it's more of a disarray of collagen because it's like a tumor versus hypertrophic scarring is like a wavy thing. And then you have collagen that actually exists in your dermis, which is what most people uh, think that all collagen is. And it is not. So that's more of an organized structural collagen with proper cross-linking. And it gives the dermis that tensile strength that it has. But you also have elastin, but you also have uh, hyaluronic acid. You also have fat under the skin. You also have water under the skin. You also have uh, connective molecules like vimentin and desmin. You have all these other things that are going on. So to say that everything is collagen is rather simplistic and wrong. And the reason I don't like this is because doctors are explaining to patients incorrectly what this stuff does. So they say, put some sculpture under your skin, it's good for your collagen. That's incorrect. The correct way to say it is we're gonna put in a, an irritant under the skin to incite granulomatosis to get, or fibrosis to get granule formation to build volume under your skin. Or we're gonna stiffen your skin by putting this under it. We're not rejuvenating the dermis like a laser would in internally or like radio frequency would internally. We're actually just depositing it underneath. And the reason the doctors feel comfortable saying this is because there are some research studies that are misinterpreted of histologic studies where you take histology, meaning you take a skin sample, you cut it down the middle, you look at it under a microscope and you'll look at the layers and you'll see, oh my God, you put radius under the skin, there is collagen deposition, but they're misinterpreting it. There is scar formation under the skin right under the dermis. It's not actually forming any healthy collagen. Well, not, it doesn't produce all healthy collagen. You get like a little bit maybe just from the irritation itself. And this has happened historically. It's not the first time that people misinterpret something, but then it tends to make sense to them because it fits into their story. So we used to think, for example, like the sun rotated around the earth, right? We used to think that the sun came up, not we, because we were dead, not born. Um, sun came up and went down around the earth. And then later we realized that the earth is the thing spinning this way and around the sun. Um, not that the sun doesn't have a rotation, but uh, that's what we found out later. However, it fit into all our theories because all our other theories were kind of built around that. Uh, so we build this array of way of explaining things that makes everything make sense, but it doesn't mean that it is true. And this is true in all of plastic surgery. Uh, there are research articles that are the basis or foundation of what we know in facelifting and they are just completely incorrect, but they're the basis of it. And it's not real science, just so everyone realizes plastic surgery, for the most part, when we do research studies, it is not real science. These are clinical studies. They are, um, they're not bench studies where we're actually studying like molecules for the most part. It's me saying, I did this and it worked. I did this and it worked. So um, all of, not all of plastic surgery, a lot of plastic surgery, most of it is based on these false foundations, which is that we have this research study that established as a landmark or precedent that uh, pulling the skin is like a good thing. And then 20 years later, 30 years later, someone came along and showed, no, it's not. However, the prior 30 years was all built upon uh, the falsifications of that. So I would say to our fellow doctors, maybe we find better ways to explain collagen deposition. And if we do, then we can get better at manipulating it and using it. So we don't take calcium hydroxyapatite and put it right under the dermis because we have fear that it's gonna cause the wrong type of calcium, or sorry, the wrong, oh, there's calcium, but wrong type of collagen formation in the wrong area, right? We have multiple layers in the face. And I have to explain this to patients because they come in and ask, doesn't it form collagen? And I say, yes, it does. But collagen is not collagen is not collagen. I have to give them, I have a million different analogies. The house one is just like one of them. And once you explain it to patients, they get a little uh, upset for a second. I say, no, no, don't get upset. It doesn't mean don't do these, pay these treatments. It just means that they're not physically doing what you think it's doing. It's doing something else. It can still have a benefit. Um, so that's all. The whole face is not made up of collagen. It's not made up of the same type of collagen and it's not made up of the same organization of collagen fibers or the same balance between the different types of collagen. 
So uh, and you can't eat collagen and have it automatically go into your skin. I've talked about that a million times. You can't put collagen on your skin in a cream and have it go in. Those things are not real. Uh, doesn't mean you can't get a benefit from whatever pill you're taking. It might have other stuff in it that's good, but it's just not the same. It doesn't mean that if you eat collagen, it turns into collagen in your skin, it doesn't do that. And vitamin C was never really for immune system function, although there are high dose vitamin C stuff used in ICUs for different reasons. Uh, it's mainly for collagen cross-linking, which is a basic concept in medicine, however, uh, because our grandmas told us we should have orange juice and it makes your cold go away. We think that's true. doesn't mean that it's true. Dan Gold is right. A house built of rigid collagen. Um, fantastic. So I hope everyone has a nice day. I'm going to run out of the office because one of my favorite people from Mexico is coming to visit. Let's go hang out.